Let's turn our attention now to the underdamped case. The underdamped case was a case where alpha squared minus omega naught squared was less than zero, where alpha, you'll recall for the parallel circuit, was defined as 1 over 2 times r times c, and omega naught was defined as the square root of 1 over lc, or 1 over the square root of lc. With those definitions of alpha and omega, you'll recall that we had s1 and s2 were equal to negative alpha plus or minus the square root of alpha squared minus omega naught squared. But in the underdamped case, the value under the radical alpha squared minus omega naught squared is negative. It's less than zero. Which leads us to then a complex or the square root of a negative number which makes S1 and S2 complex conjugates of each other. So let's go ahead and rewrite S1 and S2 then. S1 and S2 then, I'm going to write it as negative alpha plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times omega naught squared minus alpha squared. So pulling a negative 1 out of these two terms gives me a positive omega naught squared minus alpha squared with a negative 1 term there. Pulling the negative 1 out of the radical we have then that S1 and S2 are equal to negative alpha plus or minus the square root of negative 1 coming out as a j times the square root of omega naught squared minus alpha squared. Let's take this radical term, the square root of omega naught squared minus alpha squared, and define a new parameter called omega sub d, or the damped frequency. We're going to see here in just a minute that the underdamped case results in an oscillation. And the frequency of oscillation is going to be this omega sub d. With that substitution, then, we can write S1 and S2, then, are equal to negative alpha plus or minus j times omega sub d. Now, these, these expressions for S1 and S2, let's take them and plug them in for S1 and S2 in our general form of the solution. In other words, we're going to have, then, V of t is equal to a1 e to the minus s1, but s1 is equal to, um, or not, not minus s1, it's e to the s1, but s1 is equal to minus alpha. Let's see, pull the minus sign out, I guess. We have alpha minus j omega sub d times t plus a2 e to the um, minus alpha plus j omega sub d times t. Again, noting that s1 and s2 are conjugates of each other. Now let's use the product rule of exponents to separate the real part of this exponential and the imaginary part of this exponential. And we get then that v of t is equal to a1 e to the minus alpha t e to the j omega sub d t plus a2 e to the minus alpha t e to the minus j omega sub d t. Notice that each of these terms has an e to the minus alpha t, which we're going to factor out. e to the minus alpha t times a1 e to the positive j omega sub dt plus a2 e to the negative j omega sub dt. Oops. Omega sub d t. Now, using Euler's formula, you'll recall Euler's formula is e to the j theta is equal to the cosine of theta plus j sine theta. And e to the minus j theta is equal to the cosine of theta minus j sine theta. So this term here, we're going to replace it, or we have then that this uh, v of t 
is equal to the e to the minus alpha t times a1 times the cosine of omega sub d t plus j sine of omega sub d t for the first term here plus a2 times the uh, cosine of omega sub d t minus j sine of omega sub d t. Now you'll notice that we have a real part and, in a real, and a real part in both of these, and an imaginary part and an imaginary part in both of these. So let's combine the real and imaginary parts. We still have the e to the minus alpha t out here times a1 plus a2, a1 plus a2 times the cosine of omega sub dt plus a1 minus a2, a1 minus a2 times j times the sine of omega sub dt. We have two new constants. Let's define this constant right here to be b1 and this constant right there to be b2 and we now have the form of the solution for the voltage across this parallel combination for an underdamped case is then going to be e to the minus alpha t times b1 cosine omega sub dt plus b2 sine omega sub dt where omega sub d is defined as the square root of omega naught squared minus alpha squared. Once again, omega naught and alpha are functions of or are determined from the values of r, l, and c. So omega sub d we can calculate from the circuit parameters. Alpha, it's the same alpha there, we can calculate from the circuit parameters. And our task then becomes simply to determine the two constants b1 and b2 from the initial conditions. The initial voltage across here again is V naught. The initial current flowing through the inductor is I naught. Rewriting our form of V from the previous page, we have then to evaluate B1 and B2. Two unknowns, we're going to need two equations. As we did in the overdamped case, our first equation can come from simply taking V at 0 plus that's going to equal, well, e to the minus a t, where t is 0, that's just 1. Now, here we, inside here we have b1 cosine omega sub d times 0. Well, the cosine of 0 is 1, so we're going to have a b1 term here. And the sine of 0 is 0, so this term goes to 0 in this first equation. So for the natural response in the underdamped case, our first equation is simply B1 equals the initial voltage on the capacitor. Now, to get our second equation, we're going to once again differentiate this expression. Or we have then dV dt is equal to... Now here we have one function of time multiplying another another function of time. So we need to use the product rule. And to do that, we get then that dv dt is equal to the derivative of this, which is negative alpha e to the minus alpha t times b1 cosine omega sub dt plus b2 sine omega sub dt plus this times the derivative of these. Or, writing it on down here, we'll have then plus e to the minus alpha t times the derivative of this, which is 
the derivative of the cosine is negative sine, so that times the uh, derivative of the, uh, you know, we've got the chain rule here also, so we're going to have an omega sub d kicked out along with it. So we have a negative b1 omega sub d sine omega sub d t for the derivative of this term plus b2 the derivative of the sine is the cosine, positive cosine, and the chain rule kicks out an omega sub d once again. Omega sub d cosine omega sub d t. Now, when we evaluate this expression, dv dt, evaluated at t equals 0 plus, this first term we have negative alpha e to the mi well e to the zero so that just becomes one we have negative alpha times this evaluated at t equals zero well we've got the cosine of omega sub d t t equals zero so the cosine of zero is one that gives us a um, here in the front then we've got negative alpha we said that that term was just one times b one times b1 plus, but this term just goes to 0 because the sine of 0 is 0. So this whole first term, when we evaluate it at t equals 0, gives us just a negative alpha b1. Similarly, down here, e to the minus alpha 0, that's just 1. This term is going to go to 0 because of the t here being evaluated as 0. Sine of 0 is 0. And we're left with this over here which is um, cosine of 0 is 1, we're left with a plus omega sub d b2. So the derivative evaluated at t equals 0 gives us negative alpha b1 plus omega sub d b2. And as we did in the overdamped case, we can evaluate the derivative at t equals 0 by evaluating the current in the capacitor at, C, at t equals 0 plus and dividing it by the capacitor value. So this then becomes our second equation. First equation, b1 simply equals v0. Second equation, negative alpha b1 plus omega sub db2 is equal to i sub c at 0 plus divided by c. Let's look now at this. We have this exponential term, e to the minus alpha t, multiplying two sinusoidal terms. Now the sum of these two sinusoidal terms turns out to be sinusoidal also. And so what we have is an exponential envelope multiplying a sinusoidally varying function. The envelope causes that sinusoid to decay. And in the underdamped case, we have the situation where you have what's known as ringing. It oscillates. And the frequency of this oscillation is omega sub d, the damped frequency. Let's see if we can understand what's going on here. We have a parallel circuit, R, C, and L. We have energy in both the capacitor and the inductor. When the inductor has a non-changing current, the voltage across the inductor is zero. When the capacitor has a non-changing voltage, the current through here is similarly zero, just at that instant. But what's happening is that this voltage across the capacitor is oscillating, as we can see, and as it gets smaller, the energy that was stored in the capacitor is being transferred to the current in the inductor. And as the current in the inductor then starts to die out, as it then transfers charge to the capacitor, the voltage on the capacitor then changes also. And all this time, energy is being dissipated through the resistor. But in the Underdamped case, the resistor value is so large that it takes longer 
it takes a longer time for the energy to dissipate through the resistor and you actually get an oscillation or a movement of the energy back and forth between the inductor and the capacitor as it gradually as the energy gradually dissipates through the resistor so ultimately the energy that was originally stored in the voltage the initial voltage on the capacitor and the initial current in the inductor gradually that energy dissipates and the voltage goes to zero but there's this oscillation that takes place as that happens in the underdamped case.